Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to our tutorial series on Jenkins. In the last video, I showed you how to create a Jenkins job for a simple Maven project. And our Jenkins server has no problem running this job or really any of the jobs that we've created in the previous videos. But in a corporate environment, Jenkins jobs might consume a significant percentage of resources on the machine that's hosting the Jenkins server, especially when there are many jobs ran in parallel. So let's take a look at our next topic that will help mitigate this challenge. In this video, we are going to configure Jenkins controller and Jenkins agent nodes. And before I walk you through the configuration steps, I first want to discuss the problem that we're trying to solve. As software teams and their organizations grow, so does the need to scale Jenkins. In addition, software teams may need to build and test software on multiple platforms, like Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And a single Jenkins instance will likely be unable to meet these requirements. In order to meet these requirements, we must scale Jenkins up and or out. Jenkins can support organizational growth as well as the need for multi-platform build and testing through the use of agents. Jenkins agents are machines that the Jenkins controller can delegate the task of building projects to in a distributed manner. An agent node might be a Windows machine, a Linux machine, or some other platform that supports Java. This allows multi-platform build and testing using the same Jenkins server, and it also allows us to scale our Jenkins out as needed. All we need to do is add additional agent nodes. If we take a look at the architecture shown here, the Jenkins controller node is the Jenkins server that we've already configured in previous videos. We will be adding a Linux agent node in this video. After we've configured our Jenkins agents, the Jenkins controller will be able to schedule builds on each of the Jenkins agents according to the Jenkins job configuration. I'll briefly summarize the environment that I will be using in this video. The Jenkins controller and one of the Jenkins agent nodes are hosted on Azure. One additional agent will be ran on my Windows PC. The Jenkins controller and Jenkins agent nodes hosted in Azure both have public IPs. Additionally, port 22 is open for inbound traffic on the Azure agent. One thing I'd like to point out is that we won't be using the Azure VM agents or AWS EC2 Jenkins plugins. These plugins allow you to dynamically provision agents in the cloud. You may be wondering why we aren't using these plugins, and it's not because they aren't useful. These are very useful plugins. But the method that I'm going to show should be cloud agnostic and can be applied in an on-premise environment or without a cloud account. You could even set this up to run entirely on a single machine. Now that we've covered those details, let's get started. So the first step to set up our Jenkins controller and Jenkins agent nodes is to create an SSH key pair. I have my terminal up already. I'm using git bash and in git bash, I'm going to uh, use the SSH key gen command to generate a new key pair. And I'll call it uh, Azure Jenkins agent. And I'll leave the passphrase empty. Okay, so that generated a new key pair and I'm going to cat the private key. And I'm going to copy the contents of the private key. And then I'm going to navigate to Jenkins. And in the Jenkins controller, I'm going to navigate to uh, manage Jenkins. And then we'll navigate to uh, manage credentials. We'll open up the Jenkins credential store and then global credentials. And then I'm going to select add credentials. And then the kind of credential that we're going to use is SSH username with private key. And we'll give it an ID. We'll say it's Azure Jenkins agent. And the username is going to be Azure user. And then the private key will enter directly. And I'll just paste the private key into that field. Okay, and then I'll select OK. The next step is to copy our public key to the machine that is going to be our Jenkins agent hosted in Azure. And I already have an SSH session open uh, with that machine, so I'm going to open up that session. And I'm currently on the uh, logged on to the machine or the VM that will be running as a Jenkins agent. 
and I'm going to uh, modify the authorized uh, the authorized keys file and add the public key that we just created. Okay. So in the other uh, terminal window, I'm going to cat the public key. And I'll copy the public key value. And I'll add this public key to the authorized keys list. And then we will save that file. So now we should be able to SSH, or this Jenkins instance should be able to SSH to this VM hosted in uh, Azure. So we can begin configuring this Azure VM as a Jenkins instance inside of our Jenkins controller. So I'm gonna navigate back to the Jenkins dashboard. And from here, I'm gonna to navigate to manage Jenkins. And then I'm gonna select manage nodes and clouds. And as you can see from this list, there's currently only one node configured uh, for this Jenkins instance. And it's the machine that this Jenkins server is currently running on. And we're going to add two additional nodes. The first node is going to be our Azure VM. And to add an additional node, uh, I'm gonna select the new node uh, button here. And I'm gonna uh, provide a name for the node. We'll call it uh, Azure Agent. And then I'm gonna select that this is a permanent agent. And this is a permanent agent as opposed to an ephemeral agent, which could be dynamically provisioned and decommissioned. And after selecting permanent agent, I'm going to click OK. And it takes us to a configuration page where we can specify uh, additional configurations for this uh, new Jenkins agent. And it includes a description as well as the number of executors on the Jenkins, uh, Jenkins agent. So the same as we can control the number of executors on the Jenkins controller, we can do so on the Jenkins agent so that it can have, um, it can perform uh, multiple builds in parallel. I'm gonna leave the number of executors as one uh, in this case. The next configuration is the root directory. And this is going to be the directory that the Jenkins agent caches all of its build data. And this can be a pre-existing directory or a directory that's created on demand and in my case, I'm gonna create a directory on demand and I'm gonna call it uh, Jenkins uh, Agent Data. And this directory is going to be created under the home directory of the Azure user, which is the user that Jenkins is going to be uh, using to log into the Azure VM. The next configuration is very important. It's called labels. And labels are a way of categorizing your uh, Jenkins agents. So for instance, you might have Windows nodes and Linux nodes, and it might be important to have certain jobs only run on the Windows nodes and other jobs run only on the Linux nodes. So for this agent, I'm going to specify a Linux label since the Azure VM is running uh, a Linux image. The next configuration is the usage configuration and we can specify whether to use this node as much as possible or only build uh, jobs with label expressions matching this node. And that simply means that anytime a job specifies to build on certain labels, for instance, the Linux label, then uh, those builds could be scheduled on this agent if it's online. And we will use the label expressions, but I'm going to leave it uh, as the first option, use this node as much as possible. The next configuration is the launch method. And the launch method is a really important configuration uh, when you're setting up a new Jenkins agent. And we have several options for launching a Jenkins agent. And the first option is launching an agent by connecting it to the master. And uh, the master is the older verbiage, uh, and now it's called the controller. So. Uh, this is launching an agent by connecting it to the controller. 
uh, Jenkins controller. And the second uh, option is launching an agent via execution of a command on the controller. And then the last one is launch agents via SSH. And for this particular Jenkins agent, I'm going to use a third option, launch agents via SSH. And for the second node, which is going to be my Windows PC, I'm going to use the first option, launch agent by connecting it to uh, the controller. When we use the first option, Jenkins allows us to download an agent jar file, and that jar file is running the Java application that is the Jenkins agent. So we have to download the jar file to the Jenkins agent and then run the Java application inside of that jar file, which will establish a connection with the Jenkins controller. And with the second method, launch agent via execution of command on the controller, uh, this allows us to specify a launch command in this field. And the command, if I expand the, uh, the help uh, text here, the command can be very simple. Uh, we could specify SSH and then we could SSH onto the Jenkins agent node and run uh, the agent jar file directly. Or we could invoke a script on the uh, Jenkins agent node in the event that we had, uh, we have to set up uh, environment variables on the agent node in order to uh, run whatever builds uh, that that agent will be running. But in my case, I won't be using that launch method. Uh, I'm going to use the launch agents via SSH for this uh, first Jenkins node. And uh, in the host uh, field, I'm going to specify the IP of the Jenkins uh, the Jenkins agent node, which is a, an Azure VM. And I've already copied this VM's IP address, so I'm going to paste it into the host field. And then for the credentials, I'm going to select the private key that we created uh, earlier in the video. For host key verification strategy, I'm going to select a non-verifying verification strategy. And then for availability, I'm going to leave it as default, keep this agent online as much as possible. We have a couple of other options that we can use for availability, like bring this agent online according to a schedule, uh, or bring this agent online when in demand and take offline when idle. So if I were to select that, I could specify uh, an in-demand delay. And essentially what this means is it's the number of minutes, as it says here in the, the help section, it's the number of minutes for which jobs must have been waiting in the queue before Jenkins will attempt to bring this agent online. And then we can also uh, specify an idle delay. And this is the number of minutes that the agent will remain idle before Jenkins uh, will take it offline. So this availability strategy might be useful if you're trying to optimize uh, your costs on the Jenkins agent nodes. Uh, but in my case, I'm going to select the first option, keep this agent online as much as possible. I'll leave the node properties unchecked and then I'll select save. And now you'll notice that the Azure agent node has been uh, added to our nodes list. And under the build executor status, um, we not only see the controller node uh, and its two executors, but we can also see the Azure agent node and its uh, single executor. And if we take a look at the logs on this Azure agent, we'll be able to see that the Jenkins controller uh, successfully uh, made an SSH connection to the Azure VM. And after it authenticated, if we scroll down a little bit, it copied the remoting.jar, and this remoting.jar is essentially the Jenkins agent program that will run on that Azure VM. And you'll also notice that it created the Jenkins agent data directory since that didn't exist on the, uh, on the VM. And after it copied the jar file, uh, it CD'd into the Jenkins agent data directory, and it started the, uh, the agent uh, jar file. And in the final line of the console output here, you can see that it specifies that the agent successfully connected and is currently online. So let's navigate back to the Jenkins dashboard. And I'm gonna create a very simple job and we'll uh, call it test. 
Azure Agent. And this will be a freestyle project. I'm going to select OK. And in this job, I'm going to select restrict where this project can be run. And when I select that, uh, I get a field label expression. And this allows me to specify a label that was previously created, uh, like a label that was created when we were configuring the Jenkins agent, for instance. Uh, and when I specify uh, a label, this job will only be ran on nodes that match those labels. So for the agent that we just created, I uh, created a Linux label. So as I start typing Linux, it auto-completes. It recognizes the label that I previously created. And I'll backspace here. And then it says uh, label Linux matches one node. So anytime this job runs, it should run only on our Azure agent node. And now that we've specified that label, I'm going to scroll down to the build section. I'm going to select add build step. I'll select execute shell. And I'll do something really simple here. I'll just echo hello world into a new text file. And then I'll select save. So now that we've created this job, let's go ahead and select build now. And I'll go ahead and open up the first build uh, console output. And then you can see at the top of the console output here, it specifies that it's building remotely on Azure Agent with the Linux label, and it's building it in the following workspace. And it looks like the echo command did work uh, correctly, but let's just verify it uh, by logging into the VM and checking the workspace. So if I uh, take a look at the VM, I have the Jenkins agent uh, data directory. So I'll CD into that. And then I'll CD into the workspace. And I can see the job name test Azure agent. And I see uh, hello world.txt. So if I cat that, and it does contain hello world inside of, uh, inside of that file. So it looks like our first Jenkins agent is working correctly. So that's pretty much all I had for this video. And in the next video, we are going to discuss Jenkins pipelines. So I will see you in the next video. If you'd like to learn more, be sure to follow our blog at lambdatest.com forward slash blog, as well as our Lambda Test community at community.lambdatest.com. You can also earn resume worthy Lambda Test Selenium certifications at lambdatest.com forward slash certifications.